As you can tell, the EEPROM 9's been back on eBay again. And we have acquired ourselves a Prisotronic MC85. Apparently this is a British company. Although this is actually technically a rebranded, and in fact, I think literally renamed, Sharp EL811. There's my cheat sheet. This website is awesome. And you missed the part where you got the excitement of me discovering that the uh, microchips are inside a beautiful white ceramic. Made by Sharp. Yeah, it seems I don't know whether this was a legal rename or not, or legal clone or one of those that basically was just a complete rip off of the design and sold over here. But it's made in Japan, so I suspect it was somewhat authorised. Then we have the rechargeable evil NICAD battery. Thankfully they're contained in this and a connector, which, yeah, has cleaned up rather well. I just need to scrape off the last of that blue crap from the alkaline of the batteries, because NICADs tend to be alkaline. 7.2 volts, so we can easily put in our 5 AAs and uh, just bridge the other battery along and all that good. And we are totally going to listen to the advice written on it of, where is it? Do not open this case. Number three, we shall totally listen to point three, and we shall definitely not open this. In fact, we will remove the NT and it will say do open this case. The NT doesn't exist in our case. Anyway, enough rambling about. But it's contained in a nice housing which means it hasn't leaked over the electronics and destroyed everything. Now we need to hook this up to a power supply that can supply 7.2 volts. That's no problem. And see if the bastard works to work out whether it's even worth putting any effort into this. But I would love to get this up and running. Look at this. This is something you don't see often. A capacitor that says 2.2 microfarads and it actually has the M. Fantastic. You only see that in 70s kit. I have not seen it in any other time period of electronics I've taken apart. I'm going to give you the grand reveal of it being turned on for the second time. Look at that. But look at the individual segments of the tubes. Isn't that awesome and we cause an overflow error yay now this thing even has the ability to scroll back although we can't seem to do that but let's do a test make sure all the segments are displaying as they should I've got a forward up So, good, so that's all those buttons working, nine, yep, that works. That's cool, you can scroll back to previous digits with it. There's also a K which stands for constant, so that explains K on the Kovac. No battery indicator on this one, sadly. Um, memory plus, plus negative. Oh god, you can tell that, yeah, this thing isn't exactly known how to use. We can put it in negative mode, we've got zero, so we can do 0 0.6. Now, how does it go in comparison to our Royal Digital Camera, where we can divide by zero? So, one divide zero is... Woohoo, we don't get an error, instead you get a line of zeros for an error, which is interesting. That's quite unique compared to every other calculator I've ever used. What about one divide? Because as we know, mathematically it's impossible to divide by zero, but uh, Royal Digital doesn't know that. And then of course when we do it the other way round... Interesting, we've just knocked it into constant mode. interesting. So yes, I will now go to going through more details and I will uh, disassemble and uh, 
fix up this battery pack so it's useful. This is what I love about this technology. It's just, this era of technology is just completely bulletproof. Although these batteries probably died in the 1980s. So, yeah, this is probably the first time it's been turned on in at least 20 years, probably longer. But yeah, all the segments work. And I just love that, that, that patterning of the digits. It's beautiful. You just don't get something like that. We haven't tested the uh, decimals, so... Yeah, all the decimals work good. Yeah, all fully functional. Just needs a decent battery pack, which we can arrange with standard AA. I always love how the alkaline and acids react together. You missed the main bit of the reaction, but we can repeat it quite easily. use up all our vinegar. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice fizz. Will it fizz or will it bang? In this case, it fizzes. I wonder if there's a way we could force it to go bang, though. Standard NICADs. We will probably, yeah, we're going to have to modify this uh, battery pack to take standard AAs a bit. That should be fine, I think. I think I have the parts available. I do hope I do. Or we could use an RC one. T two cell lithium polymer. That's not a bad idea. The RC shop should still be open. And so the new battery's charging. My local RC shop is awesome. It's a shame advertising them would uh, give away the, the location of where I live. Otherwise, I'd happily do it. The lithium battery conversion is electrically complete, as you can see. Now I just need to get it to fit in the case, which is going to be a bit of a problem. I might not be able to fit it in the original case, which is a pain. I also had to scrap the original connector because, yeah, the battery had eaten it away enough that the uh, negative instantly broke off. So, yeah, that's no good shame. Unfortunately I was not able to get it in without modifying the case in some way and it's a pretty damn tight fit but it's in. Now let's put it in the calculator and see whether how it goes. It would not be the EEPROM 9 if we gave you a little overview of the electronics as I don't generally do teardowns on these calculators or do overviews. You've got the main power connector from the power supply here that the battery and the mains voltage goes into. Here's the VFD module, I'll remove that for you shortly so you can see it. We've got three what look to be VFD driver chips, which are also the same. So they're being in responsible part multiplexing because it is partially multiplexed. We've got the three main large scale integration sharp custom ASIC calculator chips which, if I go to the right website, are, if they're documented, here we go, integrated circuits, oh, they're the same as what are there, the 10573SA. I'll have to do some googling, and there's also a uh, Rockwell 10572PA, which does not seem to be in this particular unit. If it is, it's not on this board. The keyboard is the same as on the Kovac, which is still going strong since my last repair, although we do have this uh, ghosting problem, but you can't see it. So yeah, let's show you the VFD module, because that's pretty damn sexy. The underside of the VFD, it's got a lovely high quality connector with gold plated contacts. And here's the module, that beautiful 1970s design with the individual VFD tubes. We have a lovely board and as you can see from it there is a degree of multiplexing although they're not all multiplexed together which is interesting, an interesting point of design. And the back you can pretty easily see and you've got the nipple shot because everyone loves to caress the nipples. Mm.
a very pleasing texture nipples have. Remember folks, always twiddle with nipples. So as of any good overview, we should have the layout. The keyboard, as I said, is nice high quality Kovac K80 standard. Shame there's no battery meter on it, on this one. The display is 7 seg VFD, or 8 segments because you've got decimal points on each one. The bottom has the company, although as we know this is rebadged at Sharp, EL811, although this is MC85. I think this is authorised. The bottom size is nothing. There's a nice little yacht, lanyard thing so you don't drop it on the floor. We've got a different number to normal. Oh, interesting. I've never seen that one before. I think that means empty, doing an E. Nothing on that side. The bottom has an inspected and some instructions on how to use it because they were still kind of standardising on calculator designs at the time. And the top has the serial number with Dixon's, an electrical shop that is now long gone, but I do remember it because it was around in my lifetime, but it's now one of those stores which is long gone from the high street. I think I think the last place I remember seeing a Dixon's was at Gatwick Airport. Wasn't that long ago actually. Well, a few years, maybe. Anyway, that's completely off top. <laughs> Rambles about various stores made in Japan, like everything good it is, and yeah. Weird ass power connector, don't have a power supply. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found that rather interesting for the joys of computers and vintage calculators. Yes, I have many things I collect. This is going to work on Monday. Well, it'll be Tuesday because it's a bank holiday this weekend. Just for fun, here's the uh, crappy dead pack of nice ads, also made by Sharp. Yeah, this thing had to have been authorised. There'd be no way to have genuine sharp parts in. But Jesus Christ, these batteries are over 40 years old. My God. In completion, I think it's worth comparing this uh, to the uh, Royal Digital 5T, as it's not actually that much more chunkier. A bit, it's more closer to the size of the Kovac. But interestingly, another thing I'd like to highlight, which gives me an excuse to take this apart and show it on the interwebs again, is, while it certainly isn't as advanced, it doesn't have like the instant display on and whatnot, this, the, the uh, MC85 does, the interesting thing is, single chip calculator, whereas this one requires a chipset of large scale integration, whereas this one's just a pure single ASIC. I think that's just an interesting thing to note. And of course, it's still using that same 9 digit VFD I uh, reverse engineered and stuck in it uh, several years ago now. My god, it really is several years since I did this. Jesus, I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm getting old fast. That's scary. Yeah, I think that covers it for this. And yeah, we've added that. Uh, sticker to it, well, label, because why the hell not? Probably going to be the same kind of blue as well. These are always the sort of turquoise colour, these displays normally. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and remember, don't turn it on, take it apart.